Hello, Melissa. Hi. You want to tell us about yourself and your mural here? I'm Melissa Penny. My artist name is Malice B. Um, I'm not from Vallejo, but I've lived here about five years. I moved from Eastern Washington and originally grew up in Central California. My family is from the Bay. Um, and I really love Vallejo, so I'm, I'm happy that it's been accepted. My mural people are really positive. When I first created this mural that's gotten so much attention, I wasn't thinking about the hubbub it would cause here. Um, I just, I saw him being murdered and as a mother and as a woman who's, who's married to a black man, I have, I have little black babies and I just could imagine myself losing my, my husband and, and losing a child. And I just, I couldn't, I couldn't function with it. I just couldn't. And so I had this wall, this, this fence that I was gonna paint a mural on before the pandemic, um, but I messed up my ankle and I couldn't do it. And so it just sat there. And when I had seen him um, be murdered, I didn't know what to do. And as an artist, all I can do is just, when I'm feeling emotional, is just release. So I had a little piece of the fence and I painted it, a little mock, and I decided I needed to put this on the, on the wall. Um, and I came out one day in my pajamas and I just started painting and I didn't think about people connecting with it at all. Um, I, I just did it. And then people would stop and want to talk. I had a lot of people crying, had emotional connection with it, a lot of stories that were touching. And um, it just grew into something that was way bigger than me, it, it bigger than the situation. It, I got to meet a lot of my neighbors, um, which I had never known my neighbors. You know, we all kind of live in our own little space in our own little bubble. And when this happened, um, it really opened up the community. And um, because at the time, you know, we're all going through this pandemic and we were all feeling repressed and like to see this happen, to see him begging to breathe. And I was thinking, you know, we just, as humans, we just, we just want to live. We want to be happy. We have the right to be happy and live our life to the fullest. And we shouldn't be afraid that that's going to be taken away. I mean, we have the right to breathe and basic. I mean, that's the basic thing we want is to live and to live our best life. And so I wanted to create this as a message of hope um, because all change that occurs there's always it's always hard and there's always something painful about going through change and i think right now we're in the storm you know we're we're experiencing a lot of pain and it's going to be hard it's going to be hard for some people to, to make the changes that need to be made and it's going to be hard for us to go through it but i i feel like through this tragedy something beautiful something new and beautiful will come from it. And I'm optimistic for my children, my babies, and their babies. You know, I think it's gonna be hard. It is hard, but change is coming. <laughs> so tell us, uh, when did you start this project and how long it took you? Uh, the process? Um, I started, let's see, probably like a week or a little right after he was murdered. Um, and I, I painted every day. I'd come out about like 5 a.m. and paint for about two weeks. Um, and it's just me. I'm a one person crew. I have murals around town. I do big pieces. I have one on St. Basil Church, if you're interested. That was one of my first ones. I have one at the preschool. I have one at um, First Presbyterian inside. They're kind of scattered all over, one in Indian Alley. I'm pretty quick, but yeah, it took me about two weeks and I would come out and do it every day. Um, and like I said, it's caught, I, I didn't expect, I, I've been doing live painting and everything for about four years. I haven't really pushed my art except for the last four years. And um, I've learned a lot about myself and about people through doing public art. 
Um, usually it's really positive. With this one, because it's so politically charged and emotionally charged, I've gotten some negative um, comments, which I've had to deal with. And I think when I first started, it would kind of affect me, but now it, it doesn't affect me. I almost, um, I feel like art, and I, I think I had said this to you before, I feel like art is, it, it is a mirror. And as an artist, I am an, a mirror. And um, as a mirror, I can't hate, the mirror doesn't hate you when you feel you're, you're ugly, right? So people look at, at the art and they're coming from their perspective and they're gonna project and see what they see. And I cannot change their mind. Um, and I can't be per take it personal. Uh, some people look at it and they say, it's trash, it's an eyesore. I had a man drive by when I was painting it that said I would have put my knee on his neck longer. And, you know, they're looking at it and they are seeing ugly because there's something within them that that's what they feel. So doing my art publicly has really helped me. Um, forgive people and see people that you know everybody comes from their own struggle and it's not my responsibility um, to change that I can only give them the mirror and they see what they want to see and so I look at this and I see love and I see peace and the hummingbird is a symbol of love and hope and peace and the rainbow and I feel they always pop up in my work because I am a very hopeful person. And when I look in the mirror, I see beauty in myself, in humanity, in being a woman of color. Uh, I find it beautiful. So I dig my art. Um, obviously I keep creating it. So to the haters, I'll say, I'm sorry you feel that way and I wish I could make you see what I see because what I see is gorgeous. And if you could see that, we can get through this, you know? And simple as that. It seems kind of simple, but my view. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is Melissa's uh, Instagram. Instagram ID. And you call yourself Melissa. B, huh? Yeah, it's Malice B. Oh, Malice B. <laughs> it's a little take. My grandfather used to call me Malice, and my name means honeybee. And so it's a little take on my past. Malice B. Okay. How about the sky from here on the butterfly, and then you go to the fun there? Well, when I when I paint, I usually I'm a I'm what I call what I call a freestyle life painter, meaning I have a basic idea in my head and I just start painting. I don't have a plan. With this one, I kind of had a plan because I knew I was going to put Floyd in and the city, but after that, it was open. And so, as I was painting and I started to feed off of people's energy because people wanted to talk and there were a lot of people crying and I mean, with this pandemic, I, I hugged a couple people I had to, you know. Um, and they brought hope to it. And so the original did not have the butterfly out of the hand. Um, but as I met people and talked to people, the butterfly emerged and it became the hope that he's letting out and it flows through the rainbow over here. And as you could see, the storm is happening below the rainbow because when you're in the storm, you're not seeing that sunny days are right ahead of you. It's, it's coming, you're, you're in it and it's not fun and it's horrible, but there's always hope. And, and right now we just can't see it. And so I had this butterfly come and emerge into this almost um, abstracted, ethereal butterfly that unravels this almost cocoon, you know, unraveling and turns into this. Um, because I don't know <laughs> what the future's gonna bring. And I love the hummingbird. Yes, I love hummingbirds. I, they're in almost all of my work. They're on my body, covered up here, but <laughs> they are. I just, I have a lot of personal stories about them, but that's another interview. <laughs> <laughs> that's love. another story. Yes, it's another story. You can ask me if you ever see me about my... Now, what about <laughs> these uh, different cities here? Yes, because as Americans, um, 
we've been going through this forever and every major city is going through everybody's feeling I feel like what I'm feeling you know on some level and so I wanted to just kind of throw a little shout out to different cities um, I've got DC um, Seattle Chicago Detroit St. Louis Philly New York San Antonio and of course us you know which I put the Golden Gate to represent the Bay um, because even though we're all different cities we have different history we're all we're all still we're going through this right now we're all in the storm all of us and I, I wanted to include everybody and I love this butterfly here thank you I love butterflies I guess that means peace right yes and the yellow butterfly mm -hmm. new beginnings is that your color yellow I love yeah I love yellow I love color I'm a, <laughs> I'm a little bit I mean I can tell your mess is rainbow color <laughs> yes everything everything about me is, is color it's uh, I would paint Vallejo completely rainbow if they let me. I know everybody, there would be some people upset about it, but I love me some color. <laughs> Which is another reason I chose to paint him in the, in the black and, and white, um, to make him stand out a little bit more, a little bit more serious, because my art tends to be very colorful. And, um, and I wanted him it's a very serious thing, you know, I'm not trying to make light of something extremely disheartening and serious. And, and another reason why I came out here to paint in the morning too, not only because of the lighting, um, uh, because, you know, not many people are out at five in the morning. And when I first started, I, I did a lot of crying. It was very emotional for me to paint him, uh, to have that connection, you know, not just emotionally, but I almost feel like when I paint a portrait, I, I, I connect spiritually with that person um, because I'm in, I'm in their eyes. I'm, I'm, I'm painting them, I'm feeling them, and I, I felt really emotional <laughs> for this one. It was really hard. And I'm doing a Brianna Taylor right now. Um, and when I first painted that one, that was hard too because her birthday coincides with, I used to teach art and one of my students, um, they're the same age, and I just remember her you know she's my baby and you know, still in touch with her now she's you know she's brianna's age they're the same they would have been the same age and so it was so emotional for me because i imagine what it's like to be Bree's mama you know um and to, to have my daughter graduate and become an emt be so proud of her and and then to have her life taken away it's emotional for me this work is emotional for me it's hard, but I'm called to it. Um, and I always want to stand up and be who I'm called to be. And that's all we can do on this planet is be the best at what we were called to be. And so I paint rainbows and people and love. Thank you very much, Melissa. Thank you. Thank you.